So upgrading a lab isn't about uh, technology. It's also about planning and managing the costs over time. So in this video, I'm going to share how I'm transforming my lab into what I think will be a cutting edge environment. And I have to navigate the financial and logistical challenges. Welcome back to the channel. I'm DJ Ware and I, this is the Cyber Gizmo. I'm kind of excited to share my plans. I'm a little I'm a little nervous about it too because a lot of this is untried. So I, I want to upgrade my home lab into this proof of concept environment. That's what I'm going to call it. So over the next couple of years, I hope, I'll be implementing some pretty significant changes to explore technologies like uh, I want to go back into distributed storage like Gluster. I want to play around with Ceph. I also want to want to see if I what it would take to eliminate my spinning rust storage on ZFS to go to something like NVMe over fabrics or NVMe OF is what it's really called. So these upgrades will also serve a very practical purpose in that it will hopefully allow me to edit in real time my 4K videos directly off the network and also be able to stream 4K vid uh, video uh, on occasion as well. 4K is a bit of a challenge to stream, especially with YouTube. Uh, if any of you have attempted it, you'll know what I'm talking about. What about my current lab? What, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck is it? So. My current lab, I'm laughing because it's been around for a long time. I actually started building this lab in 2016, somewhere around in there. I had pieces of it even prior to that that go all the way back to 2006. So, But my current lab has served me pretty well over the past six years. But it's time for a refresh. The servers that are getting older, and, and as they get older, you start worrying about their reliability. There's So there's three main goals that I think I want to be able to maintain for this. The first is I want to replace some aging. Uh, yes, I have some 6th gen <laughs> Intel CPUs. I also have some 10th gen Intel CPUs that are serving as the backbone for my Ansible and ZFS network. I want to replace all that and, and get it out of here. What am I going to replace it with? I've brought in one. It's it's an AMD Ryzen 9. It's an 8945HS. Um, it is uh, actually a Minus Forum UM890 Pro, which right now is going for about I think $475 with uh, the Black Friday sale. So second, I'll continue to rely on ARM. ARM has been a very good low energy uh, all, for always on appliances. It draws sometimes less than two, uh, two watts, sometimes four when they're idle. And so they're perfect for services like DNS and Ansible. So in the past, I have used Raspberry Pis for most of that work. But, you know, I have, I kind of drifted away a little bit into some higher performance ARM uh, SOCs. And I kind of regret that decision because some of them, I won't mention any names, but some of the vendors, they get stuck. On a, on a version of the kernel and they never update it again. So until, unless you, and the funny thing is, is they'll release a new board and they'll still use the old kernel because they've already got the changes in it to support their architecture. But, you know, a lot of those old boards, like um, some of the ones that, uh, um, again, I'm not going to mention any names, but some of them use cell phones, uh, uh, CPUs. So, and they're old. I mean, they're, in one case, they're still selling a machine that has uh, Galaxy 5 uh, CPUs in them. Now, how, how far back does that go? <laughs> a long way, right? A long way. And they're still, they're, because they can buy the chips cheap in bulk, right? Uh, yeah, they got probably lots of them left over in a warehouse somewhere. So these older ARM machines are, you know, you know some of them are over six years old. Some of them have died already. Uh, yes, <laughs> stop functioning, uh, and uh, and 
and so yeah, I need to need to come up with that. The pies, <laughs> remarkably, have are still alive and well. I have some that are pie twos that are still running. Are, are still well, can still run. I don't actually use them for anything, but uh, yeah, that that's getting back into a hundred megabyte uh, network, uh, <laughs> which is not a, at all suitable. The third thing is a proof of concept lab, which we mentioned at the beginning. So. I'm going to start with a very simple proof of concept, a single note, which you can do. You can't get a full benefit of anything, but you can start with a single note and just get it up and running and then start expanding it as you have budget to do that. So, and this will be using, uh, for Gluster, it'll be using ZFS underneath, uh, Gluster on top. Now, Ceph, you can't do that because... Well, you could, but it's not supported. Uh, yeah, Seth prefers to work with either EXT4 or XFS, which that's fine. I, I ran Gluster that way for years. It's not a problem. Uh, it's not a complaint. It's just that uh, I, I can use the Gluster network for that, so that's what I'll do. Uh, and then use the Ceph for object store. So the NVMe over Fabric is, to, is an experiment to see can I get rid of the spinning rust in my storage network and be able to convert it over uh, to NVMe? That, that would be great, uh, probably expensive. Maybe I can go tiered with it. So as the lab evolves, I want to be able to scale up to maybe two nodes, maybe th three would be ideal because that's kind of where you want to be with Ceph and clusters. You want to have three node clusters in there. So I intend to make videos about the challenges and the lessons learned as I go along. The lumps I get from this, and I'm sure I'll get a few, um, <laughs> technology is never perfect, and neither am I. So between the two of us, we will follow it up somewhere. One thing I do want to talk about is a comment that Savage Pro left on the Proxmox video. He said, numerous comparative tests have proven that FreeBSD Beehive Virtualization performance surpasses Proxmox, especially with NVMe drivers. Great. That's wonderful news. Uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I asked him, do you have any details on the tests? And he never replied, but he, he may not come back you know, to the channel unless there's something to watch. But, and thank you, Savage Pro, for letting us know. Appreciate that very much. What I'm going to do is baseline that and see what the performance level is apples to apples. And before I introduce Beehive and Proxmox into the mix, just so I know where things are, I'm going to use 14.1 on FreeBSD. I'm going to use Ubuntu uh, 2410 Server Edition. And why am I picking uh, Ubuntu? Because on my benchmarks, that is the fastest distribution that that are able it is able to run IO zone the quickest of all the Linux distros. It means that I don't have to go and test all the lower the slower ones just to see how they stack up. We'll get that when we go to Proxmox. Then once I have that baseline, I'll publish that results, let you know what I got. And then I will go to Proxmox. That's all I had for today. I I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to tearing the lab up. Uh, it's been a long time, and, and that shelf probably needs to be dusted too. So this is a good opportunity to do all of those things. Uh, anyway, I hope to see you in the next video. And please leave your comments below. If you have, if you've messed around with Ceph or you've messed around with NVMe over Fabric, and you have you have some tips for me? Great. I'm, I'd be happy to listen to any of that. That's all I had for today. I hope to see you again soon. Uh, and bye for now.